<laughs> We're very, very glad. It's an honor to have three very special guest speakers with us today on our panel. And they're very, very dear to our hearts since they all have personal relations to one of us. So we have Miss Monica, who is Paula's sister, Miss Ferrar, who is a teacher in high school who has taught things several while and Paula. Sorry to out you all. And we have Alejandro, who is Pedro's friend. And they're here to share their unique perspectives about what it feels like to interact with either a sibling, a friend, or a student with a visual impairment. So now we're going to get started. My first general question is directed towards all of you. So y'all can take turns where we want to go first. The question is, what was your first impression or first initial thought when you found out that you will have a student, a sibling, or just barely met your friend who is visually impaired? Uh, me and Hippolyta actually went to elementary school together, but we really did not start hanging out with her until sixth grade. And, yeah, I, 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 the first time yeah, I was like, 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 he's basically impaired, but when I started talking to him, I found out he had like, a lot of things in common, like, what we were what the music we listened to. And after that, I didn't really think of him any differently or like any other friend. I, I talked to him, I hang out with him, we laugh, and we just have fun together. I didn't really see him as basically impaired. And that's mostly it. Hi, it's Ms. Perrar. When I first started teaching the visually um, impaired, my first thought was, holy cow, um, how the heck am I going to do this? I have to teach sex ed? What is this? I teach health, so sex ed's part of this, right? So how do I teach the reproductive system to see you can't see a picture? So, that was not. We can help with just accept this people. But I have absolutely, I've fallen in love with all of my students who are, I, I've interacted with over the years. Part of it is a love, and part of it is a frustration of love. Um, the frustration comes not from myself or working with these students, but seeing how other students interact with students who are visually impaired. Um, when it comes, I, I'm a, the type of teacher who I want them to work in groups and you know communicate and work with each other and you know to be last chosen or to not say oh no you know you get that feeling that they all quickly choose their groups or their partners they don't have to work with the person who is visually impaired and that breaks my heart because it it just it shouldn't be that way um, a lot of students assume that because you're visually impaired and I'm sure a lot of you will understand this you. You're not as smart as they are, you can't hear as well as they do, you're not going to work as hard, and there's a lot of isolation for students who are visually impaired, and that breaks my heart. Absolutely. Absolutely breaks my heart. That thing is so sweet. <laughs> I can yell loudly. I have a teacher voice. So I think that it's so important for a teacher who has any student with disabilities in their class to educate the class on those students. But unfortunately, then it puts those students with disabilities on the spot, and that can be very embarrassing. So it's really a, a very strange kind of dance on how you get, create understanding with regular ed students in, in a way that doesn't embarrass the student with a disability. And I don't know that I did so well on that, but um, it's, it is a very difficult thing to do. Teaching aside, it's more the social part that I thought was the hardest to deal with because I wanted, you know, everyone to interact and I wanted the regular students to know what wonderful people, you know, they are. And, and I wanted them to know what wonderful kids the, the regular ed students are because they didn't understand maybe what was going on. They came across as very judgmental and very close-minded, which they really weren't. So it was, it, it was a difficult, it was a difficult dance for a teacher. Um. I was a teenager when I met my sister. Um, it was totally um, something different for me. Just, no, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
my notes. Um, so, can everybody hear? No. Very, very no. Trouble. No, right? So, you don't have a teacher. But this one makes me out Yeah. I have one too. I thought my mom was was the nice, but apparently not. <laughs> Um, I was a teenager when I met my sister, um, so this is absolutely something different, something new to me. Watching my dad and my stepmom interact with my sister and how they um, were super careful around her, um, I was kind of safe back because I just didn't know how to interact with her. Um, it, was, it was kind of intimidating actually at that point in my life. Um, but getting to know her, um, that, um, I guess her to is she's a teacher's wife. She's not, she's super smart. Um, she loves to hear her sing. There's just different things that you start to, you know what I mean, understand. So, Thank you. So, Ms. Farrar, this question is specifically for you. You kind of briefly touched upon your opinions about integrating visually impaired students with other general education <laughs> students. And you mentioned some difficulties. What do you think are some strategies that both visually impaired students, teachers, and general education students can utilize to help make the classroom experience a more positive one? Yeah. I know, I love her passion. Isn't she awesome? Ah. Woo! Woo! Okay, I, I no. Thank you. I, I've got a great voice oh, like she does, up. right? You guys are going really fast. Okay. I'm sorry. I was, That's okay. Um, I talk fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, okay. So I think that all levels have to give a little. I think that students with disabilities need to be able to talk about and be open a little bit more about their disabilities, be a little bit more social about them. Because part of their journey and part of their goal is to educate others on who they are as a person and what they're just, first of all, who they are as a person, and second of all, how they are affected by their disability. We need to create empathy for all people, regardless of what's going on. The teacher's role in that is to facilitate it. She, I tried to watch, and when I saw people not getting into groups or not including, I tried to do it in a way that wasn't embarrassing and saying, hey, why don't we, let's switch up some groups. Let's you go here, you go here, you go here type of thing. Um, but I also found that, you know, sometimes when, when they got into groups, they were fine. But other times they were very, the, the visually handicapped students were very shy and weren't as outgoing. And I think unfortunately for them, that has to be their journey. They have to be out there even a little bit more so than a student without a disability because that's part of who they are and they need to be able to explain that to other people. The teacher does need to, to facilitate that. The teacher needs to put squash right away. Any kind of judgmental, mean, or biased thoughts or, or um, activity or actions. First and foremost, that teacher needs to, to lay down that law and be a, um, example of what it's like to work with all types of people. I think that working in groups is wonderful. I love doing group work with my students because, again, you're communicating on a level that's so different than like this, where a teacher stands on the stage and, you know, imparts their wisdom because we have so much. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. Uh, <laughs> so, I think that it, so I think there's, there has to be a give on both sides. I would love to see, I would have loved to have seen Paula be more, let, let me get up and let me go find a group on my own. Miss Berard, where's a group that I can join? I would have loved to have seen her do that. And granted, I had her in the ninth grade. She was very young, and that's hard to do. But that's kind of where that those steps are really important. At the same time, educating the, the students who are not that don't have disabilities what it's like so that they can have empathy, not sympathy, but empathy where they can go, you know what, that person probably has a hard time getting in groups. Let me make sure I include them in my group. Because if we don't do that then and we're not educating other people about like with stuff like that, then we're not I'm not doing my job. 
Did I answer your question? Yes, very thoroughly. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And I could not have agreed more with your answer. It seems like the main takeaway point is everyone needs to contribute a bit and have some sort of balance. Yeah. That brings me to my next question for Alejandro. When you discuss friendship, we always kind of think it's two people contributing somewhat equally or helping each other out, supporting each other out. So do you feel like both of you, meaning you and Hippolito, contribute equally to your friendship? For instance, study together, or emotionally support one another, or maybe even relationship advice? <laughs> 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 Come on, Ken. Why, why don't you feel that way? <laughs> Again, that's the only thing I want to answer. <laughs> Uh, uh, friend, uh, as a friendship, um, yeah, I, at school, yeah, we used to uh, work together and do a project. I, uh, like I said, I don't treat him differently than like, any other friend. So, if, I, I really, he's more, actually really smarter than I am. <laughs> um, but we do help each other. If you can't find anything, I can tell him, like, oh, he's right next to him on the right, or oh, he's right next to the left. If I have any questions I need to ask him, I ask him, you know, he, he can answer me without being. Yeah, because asking like, well, what do you mean about it? That you mean in like, on the, like, um, in English, we had to read stuff. He told me, like, one, one page. I would tell him, and he would start reading. And I was like, but our friendship, we don't really, like, I don't really tell him to stop, but, like, where to go. If he asks me, yeah, and if, if we were walking, and he can't see, you know, which way we were going, I don't know, oh, this one to the left or to the right. And I don't, I don't really hold his hand or, like, grab him on the shoulder. I, I let him walk on so like we're equal together. Like, we're not we're not just because he wish he can pray with me, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab him by the hand and take him anyway. You know? He can do it himself too. You know? he, he he even told myself, he only even told me like he doesn't really need that much help. You know? like, I do help him sometimes I have him you know, notice me. Like when I'm walking in like branches on top of the leaf. And the branches like since he's tall he, by a lot of branches. <laughs> but uh, I used to be they used to just grab the top of branches and move it up a little we can walk back. And I, I never told I never tell them like, oh, oh you can get me done like that and grab it and it. It's it's helpful. We have to help them out in the day. Well, yeah, that's it. You know, our friendship is normal. It's just like a regular friend. I don't have that I don't keep treating it differently than you can't see. Maybe one, you want to come up here and contribute some responses too, since you're the parents? 
I want to take it to a bar. <laughs> <laughs> they all tried to take you to a bar already. Um, I guess something like that, just kind of like to let loose and just kind of uh, see her loosen up a little bit and open up and, you know, kind of shift away from the parental and just be sisters. Um, I feel like most of the time we're around parental, so um, I think all those kind of be awesome. Just anything you see, anything you want to do our hair, anything really anything simple. You want to have lunch? Just a little bit more of that. I, I'd like to see her do more of that. So maybe there needs to be some time planning after this workshop for a sister day to go get your hair done or something, right? just the same as I taught you know I tease and play with my my all my students and, and to treat my my students with disabilities exactly the same as I would my students without disabilities you know make the accommodations make the you know help them with their disability to learn but as far as the interaction create that sense of normalcy I agree <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with you about that. Like, really, um, I try to be as normal with all of that as much as possible. I think sometimes I overdo it. Um, I, I want to see her be as normal as my kids, as anybody else. Um, and there are times when I have to step back and realize, like, okay, hey, this isn't possible. But for the most part, I definitely I'm all about pushing forward and her um, just really challenging herself and stepping up in just different aspects of. of Thank you so much for the panelists. Thanks to Monica Martinez, Julie Burrard, and Alejandro Oliveros for presenting their valuable insight at the Survivor Thread December 2015 workshop.